Now we want to talk about exception handling. Um, we've seen this before as we've been messing around with these programs. So public class exception fun. So if I've got a program and I decided I want to uh, read in some data. Okay, so I'm going to import the java.util.scanner class and then I'm going to build the scanner scanner in equals new scanner system dot in okay so that's the scanner um, and then I'm going to just create a variable integer called uh, We've already decided I'm obsessed with age, so let's not do that. Shoe size. Let's do shoe size. Shoe size equals zero. Okay. And so I'm going to just ask the user system.out.println what is your shoe size? Okay. So I've asked them that, and then I read that in using in whoops uh, shoe size equals in dot next int right because it's an integer that we're reading in okay so if I run this program this highly lucrative program and say my shoe size shoe size is 10 then the program works fine right no problems but you've probably seen this we say what's your shoe size and then somebody types in uh, 10 and we get a big fat error input mismatch exception is the type of error that we in in uh, Java terms say was thrown the error was thrown when uh, we reached that point in the program where it was trying to reach uh, read in the, the shoe size right and so what do we do about that well, in programming in general, we want to have good error handling because nobody likes it when they're using some software and the program just dies. And that's what we see a lot in the, the real world um, as we're using different programs. We'll be doing something and all of a sudden the program just closes. Well, it's run into some sort of an exception or an error and the program just shuts down. That's not the way we like to do things in order to give the users the most pleasant experience possible which is what you want with the users because if you have happy customers then that that uh, is obviously good for business and it's really good for I work technical support for a number of years to not get a bunch of calls angry calls because the program just died they were just doing something they hadn't saved anything and the program just all of a sudden died and so in order to uh, make the program handle all this as simply as possible, then what we want to do is use a try-catch block. And we use a try-catch block around code that we suspect we could get an error in, and we ought to use it uh, more often than not. And I'm not going to use it when I'm declaring a variable but I will use it for this little section here. So I, I, I put this into a try and then uh, what goes hand in hand with a try is a catch. Okay, so we've got two different things here. We've got a try block and a catch block. Anything, any error that occurs in the try will be sent to the catch block. Okay, now what goes inside this these parentheses in the catch block is the the type of error you're trying to catch now in this case what I was getting was an input mismatch exception which makes sense I was trying to read in an integer and I read in letters and it's saying you can't do that and so if here I want to catch whoops inside my parenthesis I want to catch the input mismatch exception uh, error. Okay, so input mismatch exception is the 
exception we're looking for. And then um, we need to give the object that's going to be passed to us a name because what's going to happen is when we get the error, it's going to create an instance of the input mismatch exception object that has all sorts of information about what is what occurred during the error. What were the settings and what was the error and what was the input. I mean, it just depends on the type of error that we're, we're getting. But a lot of times we'll just put E as the name of the object so we can uh, refer to that object when we are interested in knowing information about what happened during that error. Okay, so what do I want to do? Well, I want to probably do something like print out to the user and say, sorry, that was not valid input. Please enter the shoe size using numbers. Something like that, okay? So now, when I get this, um, what did I spell? Did I spell it wrong? Input mismatch exception. This is highly embarrassing. Okay, so we're going to try and catch, and then what we're going to catch is the input mismatch exception. Is that not what it was? Am I going crazy? Comment that little block for a second and try this again. Oh, it's going to yell at me for having to try without a catch. This is good. I, I, I'm sure you were thinking I, I was perfect. And now the truth comes out. I'm not perfect, unfortunately. So if I type in 10, then the error that I'm getting is input mismatch exception. Um, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I know what's going on. Because this is spelled right. I, I did do this part right. And and then this is a good learning uh, opportunity. Okay, so we've got the try and the catch, and it's telling me it cannot find the symbol for the input mismatch exception class. And that's completely valid. There is no such thing as an input mis mismatch exception class anywhere in my program. Just like the scanner, we need to import the input mismatch exception class that's going to have all of that information about the error. And so a lot of times what we'll do, we could go in and import the java.util.input mismatch exception error, and that will fix the problem. <laughs> Okay, let's spell it right and try again. That'll fix the problem, all right? Because we've now imported that class that's going to have that information. And so if I say 10, then it will say, sorry, that was not a valid input. Please enter this shoe size using numbers. But the point I was going to get at is we can also just say import java.util.asterisk because we end up using a lot of classes out of the Java Util library. Okay, and that will just import all the classes that import the scanner and the random and the and the input mismatch exception and and uh, some other exceptions, and so I say um, ten again, and it tells me, sorry, that was not a valid input. Please enter the shoe size using numbers. Okay, so it's done what I've told it to do. Um, when I as soon as I got that error, now notice if I system dot out dot print line below that error, and I say this is some code. And I say ten. Notice it goes and says, "Sorry, that was not valid input. Please enter the shoe size using numbers." Um, it never executed this line that said this is some code. 
That's because the error occurred here, and as soon as the error occurs, it jumps right down to the catch and doesn't execute any of the code below it. And so that's something we need to keep in mind. Now, the one of the questions you might be asking yourself is, well, that's all fine and dandy, but I need to get them to enter other input. Okay, so let's try again. After they have uh, entered the shoe size once, let's have them try it again. In dot next line. Whoops, next int. Okay, so I say 10, and it tells me, sorry, that was not valid input. And actually, it jumped right into an error. Sorry, that was not valid input. Please enter the shoe size using numbers. Whoa, another input mismatch exception. The problem here is we've discussed this idea of a buffer. And we were um, reading information in from the buffer using a next int. It got an error, which means that it never could read anything in from the buffer. And so it's still sitting out in the buffer when we try to read in the next one. And so as soon as it hits this next int, it just goes right out to the buffer before we can type anything and pulls in what's already sitting out there. So here we might want to flush the buffer. And we do that by just doing in dot next line, or whatever the name of your scanner is, dot next line, and that flushes everything out of the buffer. And then now if I run it, then I can demonstrate the way I wanted to. So I say 10, and it says, sorry, that was not valid input. Please enter the shoe size using numbers. The problem is this. If I enter 10, then the program works fine using uh, numbers. But if I say 10, and then I happen to type something bad again, then I get another input mismatch exception. Because this in.next line is not in a try, it's in a catch. If we want errors to be caught, they need to be in a try. Okay, well, so let's put this one in a try. Well, what happens if they enter? I mean, you cannot, don't make ever make the mistake of... Uh, underestimating the stupidity of your users. <laughs> okay, that's that's probably harsh. But from a guy who's worked a lot of technical support, they will do crazy things. They will do things that you will you would never suspect they would do. Um so w w what if they enter bad data a hundred times. Are we going to put a hundred try catches? Well, that doesn't make too much sense. And so what we want to do is uh, send them back up to the try to re-enter the data rather than trying to enter the data down here. And um, we'll, we'll demonstrate how to do that part in the next uh, video. All right. Spencer out.